emotionally and they find themselves where well, I'm just going to go over here and I'm just going to go, you know, do what I'm used to doing because this ain't going to work for me. I done tried this, man. I thought when I gave my life to God that everything was supposed to be perfect. I thought everything was supposed to work out. So I, I guess this just ain't for me. And so they, 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 they go out the door after they done had the, sp- the fight with the spouse and all and they look and they're boom. They were one of the people that they generally be in the drug house with. And so they, hey, what's up? You know, hey, man, what you finna get into? I ain't finna get into nothing. Hey, you want to go? You want to ride with me or whatever? Oh, boom. They get in the car and they ride. And next thing you know, they over at, at the drug house, at the crack house. And now they're in there smoking the drugs because uh, they were not mature enough. They were not ready to deal with that uh, at that level. What they needed to have done was, uh, was to sit under tutelage until they could be developed and all those desires of what used to be, of what had them, could be washed away from them. Because see, some things are lost in your head in order to become a, a abuser or something or and a, be addicted to something. It becomes a part of your mind, which your mind tells you, you gotta have this. Your mind tells you, you gotta do this. So it's not just only connected to a spirit so you can get the spirit out of the person but if the mind don't change y'all they're going back they're going back the mind got the change so you can't just run in on that stuff when you're not mature enough yet you can't do it that's where the scripture talks about having zeal, but not according to knowledge. Since you have, or you are caught all up, you hyped up in it, but you ain't got no knowledge in it. You don't have no power in it. You're literally coming forth as an imposter. As an imposter. And so they find themselves literally beat up. Is what happens to them. Let me read this last text here. Let me get where I need to be. It says in verse 16, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. This is one man. It said the man with the evil spirit leaped on them. One man took over all them. It was seven of them, remember? One man whooped seven of them. Leaped on them. Connected to them, persuaded them, overcame them, came over them, got on top of them, and prevailed, got victory over them. So that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Let me talk to y'all about that nakedness and woundedness. It's going to expose you. And when I say you, I'm talking about me too. It's going to expose you. It's going to expose you. It's going to expose you. Run up on that stuff and you ain't ready. And it's going to expose you. Let me show y'all what I'm talking about. I like to use parables because analogies always help us. If you start, um, you know, challenging folk or, or expressing that you are against something that someone is doing, people are doing, the natural response inside of humanity is, is you ain't no better than me. That's our natural response. Okay, so you judging me, that's the natural response. That's just the natural response. Man, judging, boy, that's that first, that's that first thing gonna get thrown up. You judging me. So when a person feels like that, that you are judging them. Automatically inside of the heart, they start desiring to see you fall. Oh, I'm going to tell y'all the truth about it this morning. Don't let them lie to you. They start desiring to see you fall. And the reason being is, is that they feel like you think you better than me. When in essence, it may not have anything to do with you thinking that you are better than them has nothing, would I say not one thing to do with you thinking you better than them. Because I'm going to tell you something. 
It's certain things I ain't going to be a part of, but it ain't got nothing to do with me thinking I'm better than other folk. I'm going to tell y'all why I don't do certain stuff. I don't like to reap what I sow. That's why Delphine don't do it. You got it. I just told you. It ain't got nothing to do with me thinking I'm better than you. I don't like paying for stuff. I'm sick of paying for stuff, man. I'm tired of paying for stuff. I done paid out. So I don't do it because I just ain't got time to be bothered. I, I'm, I'm, I'm 46 years old, which is not old, but I'm a 46-year-old tired girl. And I'm tired because I came out the stall so young, man. I was getting drunk and smoking marijuana like a freight train at 12 years old. I came out early, man. I started out early. So I started early. I came out early. I'm tired. I just don't feel like being bothered. I don't want my mind aggravated. I don't want my mind frustrated. I just want to live the rest of my life, however long that may be, in a place of peace. I, I just don't want to pay for stuff. That's why. It has nothing to do with me judging you. Please don't think that I say what I say because I'm judging you. I promise that ain't it. I I don't judge you because the way you live. I don't judge you because of what you're doing. I don't. I don't care if you come beside me and you smoke cigarettes till your lungs is black. Them your lungs, baby. I don't care what you do. I ain't going to say nothing about it because I'm judging you. I'm going to say it because I don't want my lungs black. I'm going to say it because I don't want to pay for that stuff. That's why I won't do it. But the first rule of thumb with people... When you don't do something or won't be a part of something, they think you're judging them, and then they automatically launch an attack, attack against you to show you that you're wrong. They want to prove something and get something on you. They want to get error on you. They want to find some fault inside of you now because uh, you have challenged me. And so now I want to find something inside of you when it has nothing to do with challenging. This is the thing about it right here. That is the reason why I'm very particular with how I do certain things, y'all. I'm very, very particular. That's why when people be doing things, even when I'm talking to people and they say cuss words or whatever, some of them, I'm sorry, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm sorry. Look at that. Oh, okay, then. Hey, listen, that's you. You know what I'm saying? That's you because at one point in time, I was you. I don't have anything to to do I understand that that is a process that you got to go through I get it do you understand me I get it because sometimes I'll spit out some if you catch me on the wrong the wrong day and in the wrong way I'm gonna get you too so you know that's just that's just part of it you know I, I, I ain't lying about it that's just part of it so I don't judge you concerning anything that's going on but I just choose not to be a part of certain things because of the consequences that I know it yields I I know for a fact that if I steal something from somebody, that it's going to warrant some stuff to be stolen from me, and I don't want my stuff stolen. Uh, Y'all better hear what I'm saying to you. Let me tell you what I did yesterday and tell you how good God is. Uh, I'm going to throw this plug out here for y'all to understand the power of being faithful and the power of being a, a giver like you're supposed to. All right, so I went yesterday, got a brand, I got a brand new phone yesterday, brand new phone. I am, you know, you get them, you ain't really used to them when you first get them, you know, you, you gotta learn it and all, you know, my mind in several different places, they, they say a storm coming, I need to try to beat the storm, I gotta go, I gotta, I gotta go to Enterprise, leave Enterprise, go to Andalusia, went to Andalusia twice yesterday, I got a whole lot of stuff that I got going on, I need to get to the house to make sure that my dogs is situated since they say, you know, this storm's supposed to be coming and all this little kind of stuff, I need, I need to make sure everything is situated like it's supposed to be, I need to prepare myself for what I gotta do today and all this little type stuff, so I'm running, well, I go to the grocery store and I leave my brand new phone in the buggy at the grocery store. I leave, I go to my nephew Libri house, I go over there, I go over there, I go over there and I tell him off because that's just what I needed to do. So I go in there, I straight blow him, but you know, I'm getting in behind him and, I, and all. when I get ready to leave, I realize that I ain't heard my phone ring because it's supposed to have a text or ring or something. If you know my line, y'all can it keep going off, don't you? Those are like texts and stuff that's coming in. So I, I, I realize I ain't heard this thing, something must be wrong. So it is 
nowhere to be found. Libra, you call my phone. My phone, you don't hear it ringing anywhere. It's nowhere to be found. Well, bam, I must have left this thing at the grocery store. So let me see if I left it at the grocery store. When Libri calls it, my son, girlfriend, Mika, answers it. And she says, a young man had the phone. She said, I called looking for Miss Delphine and a young man had the phone and he answered and told me where he was for me to come and pick the phone up. Listen, let me say this to you. I live by a concept and the people at Trim will tell you this. I live by a concept where I constantly say I can't lose. I can't lose. I don't literally count. I can't lose. I said, I am a tither. I am and I give offerings and I give I sow seed. I also do alms, you know, and then I do free will offerings as well. And so I understand that these are things that keeps me governed. If you tithe, it says that he will rebuke the devourer, which means that he's going to make sure that you do not lose. I don't care how tough it may get. Just speak to it and stay your butt right there because the situation going to work in your favor because God is faithful. And so I cannot lose. Well, okay, the phone shows up and then uh, my son's girl my son girlfriend has the phone look just that quick everything works out because I cannot lose my greatest testimony is when I wore contacts a little bitty glass contact a glass contact them things were seven hundred and fifty dollars a little glass contact is what I wore before they put me in these glasses here and one of them came out of my eye Lord have mercy lo and behold we trying to find the contact and I said to God, I cannot lose. I cannot lose. I said, Lord, you know I have to have those contacts in order for me to be able to see. Because I can't drive or nothing without having something to help my eyesight. So, God, you got to do something. One of the guys that I took care of in the rehab called, I called him Hercules. That's what I nicknamed him. Hercules. God bless Hercules, wherever he is now. I would love to see him. I said, Hercules comes in there with the contact in his hand. He literally, it was in his room. He walked in his room, could have stepped on this glass contact, but he came in there with the contact in his hand and gave me, I washed my contact, sterilized it, put it back in my eye. It was as if I had not even lost it. So I'm trying to tell you, you, I, you cannot lose. And so therefore I don't like to lose. I don't like to lose. I don't. I don't like to lose. I'll call it a lesson before I call it a loss. That's why when people pass away, I don't be saying, I'm sorry for your loss. No, no. How are you going to be lost if you say you're going to see them again? Some folks even say, see you later. You know, that's what they'll say. Rest in peace. See you later. How, well, how you lost it if you're going to see it later? I mean, come on. It's just certain things I don't do. It's certain things I don't do, certain things I don't say. And it is because of the simple fact that I don't want to have to go through the consequences that comes with it. See, the Bible says in Proverbs that the way of a transgressor is hard. I don't want them consequences. I'm sick of that mess, man. I'd rather just tell you the truth. I'm serious. I'd rather just tell you the truth. If I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. I just have to tell you the truth. If I wronged you, I just have to tell you I'm sorry. I wronged you. Hopefully you can forgive me or whatever the case may be. And we can pass things up. We can work it out. I, I, I don't, I, look, I don't have time for them consequences. I don't like them. They come at inopportune times. They, they, they make me sick. They, don't, they, they show up just when you think everything is good. Here come a payment for something you done said or something you done did. I don't like it. So please, for those of you that are under my voice, so that you know, I don't judge you for anything that you do. I don't judge you for anything that you do. Now, I might not agree with what you do. I might not agree with it. But I don't judge you for it. I do not judge you for it. Please understand that. I'm not your judge. There will come a time when you will be judged. And then, and let me tell you this so that you know, the Bible says that you will be judged by the saints, that the saints are going to judge. And so therefore, yeah, yeah, there are going to be some people that are going to have the authority to judge, to judge you. 
Go read the Bible. Go Google that and you'll see what that said in the scripture. I don't consider myself to be one of them yet. I don't. I don't consider myself to be one of them yet. No, 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 no. It said when the saints go marching in, I don't.